Hey there folks, LazyBones2020 here again with another Loot Crate unboxing. This time we've got two boxes to unbox for you guys, the Fallout Crate and the Elder Scrolls Crate. Um, lots of cool stuff expecting uh, to be in these guys. Um, I come to realize after a couple of those Loot Gaming crates that at the end of the day, no matter what, the odds of me liking every franchise that's included in them are going to be kind of slim. Um, so, why not go with a franchise that I know I love. I love Fallout, as you can see over there. Um, and Elder Scrolls is also uh, super awesome and near and dear to me. So I thought, why not go with one of these specialty crates and uh, see what we get out of them. The Fallout crate is bi-monthly, uh, so you get it every other month. It's 30 bucks, $5 shipping. You're going to get about $65 plus worth um, of items out of it. The Elder Scrolls crate is about uh, $50 with a, an additional $5 for shipping. You're gonna get about $80 plus dollars worth of stuff out of that one. Um, the two themes for them, so for Fallout, it is Seaside, and for the Elder Scrolls crate, that one is Vampires. So, really cool. With the Fallout crate, I'm expecting uh, to get some cool things along the lines of the Far Harbor DLC uh, for Fallout 4. Um, that one, if you haven't played it, uh, you go to a um, bay area where you have to fight a bunch of uh, nautical themed monsters uh, or mutated um, animals, stuff like that. Uh, and it has a really strong theme on the replicants, or excuse me, the synths. Um, the replicants are from Blade Runner, uh, but similar similar themes there where if, if a robot, if it has sentience, is a human. So if you haven't played it yet, I definitely would recommend bringing Nick Valentine as a companion with you because he'll have a lot of great insight. I did not bring Nick because I wasn't super close with him in my playthrough, my first one, so next time I will bring him to not miss out on any of that cool stuff. Aside from that, we know it's coming with a Meyer Lurk figure. Uh, each Fallout crate comes with an exclusive figurine. Um, and aside from that, I'm trying to think of other water-themed things. For Fallout in New Harbor, there's Vim, the competitive uh, competitor to Nuka-Cola. So that's another soda over there. They even have their own uh, power armor, um, which is pretty cool that you'll find there. Uh, so, you know, Let's just open it up and see what we got. Fallout 4, Fallout 76 most likely. There is some water in Fallout 3 uh, in the Point Lookout DLC, but I, I don't think we'll see any of that here. Uh, so first off, we've got that Mirelurk figure. Super cool. A little dark to see in there. So we'll take him out. Um, powered by Loot Crate. Um, it's got cool uh, vault tech uh, branding all around it. Um, even the Loot Crate logo uh, gets the, the vault tech experience. So going through here, comes with a cool base. Um, Meyer Lurks, one of the cooler, um, all enemies are cool, uh, one of the cool enemies from Fallout uh, in the franchise. And my first experience with them was the most memorable experience. It was in Fallout 3, you were at Rivet City, which is a town that is structured out of a sunken battleship and you have to go into one half that is completely submerged and you have to fight a bunch of these guys just look at that detail really cool i'm liking how it turned out there's a lot of variety in the the colors and the shading here and i just love how that face turned out um and it has a good weight to it and with the base um really neat uh but we have to back to the Rivet City quest. Um, you're there, you're underwater, you have to manage your oxygen, and you have to manage all these Mirelurks who are attacking you underwater. Um, not the easiest thing to do for sure. Let me pop this guy up, up here. <laughs> um, so cool, he fits right at home. Uh, so Mirelurks, definitely spooky. Uh, the face is the weak point if you haven't fought one before. So using bats is highly recommended. So, there's the first thing. Pretty cool. Uh, we've got our t-shirt. Every box, I think, comes with a t-shirt. Um, this one is Vim. You've got Vim. I think that says, yeah, you've got Vim. That's what it says. Really neat, because it has that uh, retro feel that a lot of the Fallout um, art has. 
uh, you know, we're in this dystopian future where everything is is like it stayed in the the 40s and 50s in terms of our our design <laughs> so really cool i've this is the only fallout shirt that i've had forever and as you can see it's kind of a repetitive design so glad to have something else uh to wear here uh like that a lot um vim the soda that is based on don't remember the name but it's from the northeast and exclusive to that region um so Pretty neat that they were to take some of that real life influence and then put it into the game. Definitely would say do more research than me or, or brush up more on your follow-up lore uh, about the exact name that sort of that is based on. This looks like it's a towel, uh, which is interesting. Um, well, you wanna see the cool side, huh? Uh, Far Harbor and then, oh, there we go. Um, cool, but also kind of impractical. Uh, if I'm going to be honest, because if you're if you're getting a towel and it's just this long part, you aren't ever really going to be able to see that whole thing if you hang it up to like you know dry hands or anything like that. And so it's like okay, you've got this side, which albeit that is cool. So you've got the um, ship in Far Harbor, but then on the other side, you know, you've just got your your upside down art here. So I think context um, is important to how these collectibles are used. You can't just slap a, a graphic onto a towel and say, yeah, that'll look good in someone's home or uh, things like that. Excuse me. Uh, next we have pin. This one is the lead belly perk pin. Uh, so that's a, a perk throughout the Fallout franchise. If I remember right, I normally don't get it because um, I don't invest a lot in my endurance because I'm not, I, I don't have a whole lot of the E in the special, <laughs> but um and I think that's what it falls under. But when you drink irradiated water, it affects you less or not at all. Um, I'm always a scavenger and I find a ton of purified water, so I never use it all too much. And I don't feel like you're near enough bodies of water that are radiated for it to be valuable to me. But I know a lot of folks go with this play style and it's pretty cool. I mean, you know, you can drink out of toilet and you know, no harm done. <laughs> um, and then what is this? It looks like the multifunctional seamless wear. Let's take it out and see what it looks like. Um, so, if I wouldn't have read that, I would have just thought it was like a bookcase. So it looks like this, by reading the packaging, which is a little hard to see, but um, it can be used as a wristband, a face sock, a blind chicken, a bandana, neckerchief, Alice band, do rag, hair band, and it just goes on and on and on. But uh, so we've got the power armor uh, kind of face here. I've read that we're using this as a face mask in you know pandemic is not ideal, um, so wouldn't recommend it for that. But maybe like a headband or something. But a little weird. I know it's a multifunction piece of cloth um so that might be you know cool for some folks my hair's gotten so long since last week but uh you know you can use it as a headband or whatever but then it kind of loses what it was so i think if they would have just went all in realized a bunch of people kind of need face masks right now and would have just made it a face mask especially if it's going to be the the power helmet um i think that would have made more sense all all in all, this is kind of kind of silly. Um, not even though it can be used for a bunch of things, don't really see the practicality of it. But to kind of go back over what we got in the follow crate, that's everything. Um, looks like we've got the Mirelurk statue up there. Got the pin. Bring that up close. Uh, we got the Vim shirt and the Far Harbor towel which I think is a little silly um, with how they did the design. And then this multi tool, what do they call it? Multi-functional seamless wear. So whatever that is. Uh, I think if they would have had a bit more of a direction with that, like I said, a regular face mask, that might've been cooler. But I love the Vim shirt. Vim shirt's cool. I like the Meyer Lurk statue, but I think after this, I've really come to realize, oh, and you might not be able to really tell, but those are all different ball boy designs. Um, 
the yellow's a little rough to see. Uh, but I think after this, I have discovered that I've got enough Fallout stuff. Um, and, you know, the one after this, the theme is rad. Um, and that comes with a rad scorpion statue. And, you know, at the end of the day, those are just big scorpions. So I don't really see a lot of need to have that in my collection. Um, some folks might, you know, might want to collect them all and that's cool for them. Um, definitely don't want to knock it if that's what you want to do. But I think out of there, I only like like two things. And for $35, if we're including shipping, I could just be a bit more selective and order a shirt off the Bethesda store. Um, or I don't think Hot Topic sells them anymore. But yeah, uh, and some other type of, you know, specific statue or thing like that as well that I know I would like, um, as opposed to the random things. Because the, the towel is a little silly and the seamless wear is a little strange. But maybe the Elder Scrolls crate can change my mind, um, or at least would make me want to keep it for another one. So, open it up. We've got the Dragonborn, the uh, Skyrim logo. Um, right there, before I go any further though, we know one thing that is in here. It is the Croesus Dragon Priest Mask, which is this. And I looked down before, so I know about uh, this guy. Um, so similar to the Fallout um, statues, looks like this comes with not always a Dragon Priest, um, because which is kind of good because a lot of them look similar, they're just different colors, uh, but some type of helmet, mask, uh, headpiece uh, from the Elder Scrolls franchise. But I think from the ones I've seen, they're all from Skyrim, uh, which is okay. I started with Oblivion and then played Skyrim. I haven't played a lot of Elder Scrolls online um, just because I'm not super big into MMOs. And Fallout 76 is kind of like a blend, I haven't played that ton either, of traditional gameplay and multiplayer gameplay to where I'm like, ah, uh, you know, that's a bit better for me, but like, Elder Scrolls Online, no folks like it. Uh, just not my cup of tea. But back to the Croesus mask. Really cool, there's a lot of good detail in here. Um, with this, all of the, it looks like kind of like a burlap sack actually for his hood, um, which may or may not be where they were trying to go with him. But the mask itself has a lot of really cool detail. It has a good weight. This base though, the base is lame um, in comparison to how cool that Fallout one was with the gear. Um, but you know, not bad. Um, all in all, has good paint, um, good heft to it, and overall good design. I like this uh, mask that they went with. Uh, if you haven't played the games, if you collect all the masks, you get an even cooler mask. And then there's the Dragonborn DLC where there's a separate mask that's not included in those masks, uh, which is also pretty cool. But they all have different effects and, and things like that, so. That's a little bit about Croesus. The Dragon Priests love dragons and are not good guys because you have to fight them. Um, or they're like reborn selves because they're trying to bring the dragons back. Or the dragons are bringing them back, vice versa. Anyway, Croesus, really cool. This is neat. Um, so this is the Amulet of Talos. Uh, this necklace is actually probably the necklace I wore the most throughout my Skyrim playthrough. And the reason for that is the Amulet of Talos um, increases this cooldown speed, or it decreases the cooldown time. That's the that's the actual way to say it. <laughs> of your shouts, which are if you haven't played it, um, essentially spells that use a different meter um, that you use by speaking the dragon language. Uh, but that's the amulet. Really cool. It's got a good weight to it and um, it was one solid piece, um, which is nice. Uh, it's kind of heavy though, so if you plan on wearing it for a long time, it might weigh, you know, make your neck a little tired over a little bit, but I like it. It's a cool replica um, and really good quality, so I appreciate that for sure. And it's something I'm familiar with. Uh, so we've got, it wouldn't be a loot crate if you didn't have a pin. Um, so we've got a pin here. This, I'm not super familiar with the icon. It is a dragon, but not the dragon I'm used to. But it's a bit of a mail postage stamp uh, type deal, which is pretty cool. Um, it even has a rubber texture to it, so it's like, makes me feel like I could use it as a stamp. Um, 
which might, you know, be worth a shot. Um, but, you know, I'm always down for more pins. And it's cool that it's not just a perfect circle either. It's It's got that um, organic shape to it. So I like that. That's, that's a cool pin. This looks like a towel. We're going to do how I feel about those. Um, okay. So this, I believe, is the... So for sure, vampires bring it back to that. I think it's the Graymore expansion icon um, for Elder Scrolls Online, which is where you go and fight a bunch of dragons. I think that takes you back to Skyrim, but I'm not super familiar. Uh, so feel free to correct me in the comments. But here we go, same issue, right? They could have done two of these logos. So where if it's hanging on your towel rack, you could see the whole thing, but they didn't. They were just kind of like, eh, let's just slap, you know, the icon on the towel. So you either see this or you see this, which not practical um, for for actual use. It's like, give me a poster if you're gonna just give me a poster for a towel or give me like a decal or something like that. But you know, it is what it is, another towel. <laughs> so we've got our t-shirt for this box, um, which <clears throat> is, like I said, for that Graymore expansion for Elder Scrolls Online. Um, pretty cool, but it looks like they took a poster and pretty much slapped it on a shirt, which I'm not always a fan of. Um, I think I would have liked it more if the text wasn't at the bottom, um, or if the text was on the back instead. Um, but, you know, I don't have any Elder Scrolls shirts, so yeah, it's pretty cool. It's got a vampire on it and some Elder Scrolls characters. Um, it's not bad, but not, not great design, like that Vim shirt where it was really cool, practical, and uh, had a solid design. So these are what looks to be stickers or window decals. Not just any window decals, divine window decals. So uh, it looks like there were three sets, this being the last set of the nine divines from the Elder Scrolls series, or their, their gods, essentially. So we got Julianos, Kinnereth, and Talos. Uh, Talos amulet. Uh, so pretty interesting. You can put them on your windows, uh, put them on your car. Um, you know, cooler and than just having a regular logo from one of the games. Um, and you know, it would take like a real fan to be like, oh, I know who that is. That's that's Talos, you've got Talos on your car. Uh, instead of just being another typical uh, logo and things like that. I think, I think that's actually everything. So all in all, shirt's not bad, but I could wear it, but I never played that expansion or much of anything of Elder Scrolls Online. So I feel like I was a bit of a poser. I do feel like, I know since this is newer, that's why they went with it. Uh, but if we had any Dawn Guard stuff from Skyrim, um, might have been pretty cool. But that being said, we did get a few Skyrim items in here, so no need to go overboard on it. The two most recent things make sense. Uh, towel again, I think they designed them pretty poorly. Uh, might be good as a towel, uh, but when it comes to the design, not ideal. I'll have to look up what this pin is about for Elder Scrolls, but it's a cool design. Um, you know, someone might look at it though and think it's from Game of Thrones um, or something like that because it looks like, it reminds me of one of those icons, but you know, no problem. Uh, it's a neat pin in its own. Um, you know, I'd say for both of these kits, uh, both these boxes, it's a little sad that we mainly just got stuff from the past two games that have come out. Um, you know, Oblivion, there's there's five Elder Scrolls games, right? And then there's the online game. So there's pretty much four games out of the six that didn't get representation all that much, really. Um, and while they're not new, I think someone who would subscribe to something like this would greatly appreciate it. So that might be something going forward. I'm sure it's my only one, but for sure, like half of this was Skyrim, half of it was Elder Scrolls Online. Whereas with the Fallout crate, most of it was Fallout 4, which is fine. Um, and then Meyer Lurks, those, the design has kind of stayed the same uh, throughout that. So that's okay too. 
but you know Fallout New Vegas is, is really big but it doesn't really fit Seaside so that makes sense uh, but not everything in that really went with Seaside if I'm thinking about it let me pick it back up again okay this did this did this didn't um, so either they should have gone with another like say another Vim item um, or like one of the rebreathers from the game, like because there's the the dive marine armor that's in Far Harbor that's specific to that area, which would have been pretty cool instead of just generic um, power armor. But still, um, the item in itself is a little silly. Uh, but yeah, there are like two things, two or three things that specifically felt aquatic, um, and then that one kind of throwaway item, uh, and the pin lead belly. So that made sense. So I guess it was, it was all okay overall, an okay experience. Um, the Elder Girls Scroll stuff is definitely more quality, but that being said, it's an extra $20. Uh, so that makes sense there. I would say for the Fallout one, I don't think I'll subscribe again. Just because the, the cost and the odds of getting things that are practical and that you'll like, you're probably better off just buying those things individually. Um, you might miss out on the cool exclusive statues, but, you know, not everything in Fallout in itself is iconic, like the rad scorpions, those are just scorpions. Um, the Elder Scrolls one, definitely cool, leaned a little too heavy into Skyrim and Elder Scrolls Online for someone who doesn't play Elder Scrolls Online, but I'm gonna give it one more shot. Uh, the next theme for that is Mercantile, and I, I think it comes with the blanket and the mask of... I'm gonna totally mispronounce his name. It's like Clavius Vile, I think. <laughs> um, and that looks pretty cool. So, we'll try that again. If that doesn't work out, I might end up canceling those as well. I will say that I had a little bit of a negative experience with Loot Crate recently, where I ordered the Loot Crate DX, um for October, no, excuse me, for September. Um, that's how long I've been having this issue. Um, and it was supposed to come with like Venom, Black Widow, uh, Beetlejuice, and Fallout, because Fallout's in like all of their crates for whatever reason, <laughs> which is fine, fine for me. Um, and I, I ordered it and it was on like Labor Day discount and then it never got attached to my account, but it charged me. And then I contact customer service. I'm like, hey, am I gonna get this? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna get it, no problem. It'll show up on your account eventually. And then I got charged for this month's, which I didn't have any interest in, which is Venture, I think is what it's called. And it's got like Jurassic World, Star Trek, and a couple of other things, which I'm not super crazy about. You guys might be interested in that and that's totally fine. Um, I was able to get that canceled and get it refunded and everything like that and I should get my crate that I paid for originally in like eight weeks they said but that kind of sucks um, and when it comes to specific branded boxes the only other one that they have out right now and I think I have any interested in is the destiny crate I've played the first one through Taken King so I put a good amount of hours in it but never played the rise of iron and since all the expansions are included with Xbox Game Pass, I picked up Destiny 2 and have been playing through all of that. That box ships out in December. There's only four of them, and they're quarterly as well, I believe. Um, but I need to see if I'm going to be a super fan by like mid-November, whenever they charge uh, for that, uh, or the due date is. So we'll see. Um, we'll see if I get that loot crate. DX box and I will for sure be doing one more Elder Scrolls crate so we'll see how that is and then might do the Destiny one but that one's up in the air. After the crates I might find some other ones um, from other companies or I might just change up the format a bit but I've appreciated the you know you guys sticking around for the journey that we've been on uh, through a bunch of the different crates that Loot Crate has to offer. Um, We'll see how, how these next experiences go and if I stick around or if I just look elsewhere. But as always, thanks so much for sticking around and for stopping by. Y'all have a great one.